I want to present some of our findings from Overdue about how women and men are involved in storing and distributing waste. So in terms of ways of storing fecal waste in Freetown, um, they're the most common ways, there's two most common ways. So firstly, there would be this kind of toilet often produced by in low income settlements, non-government organizations that has some kind of septic tank that stores the fecal sludge. Um, secondly, and much more commonly, we have uh, pit latrines often built by households themselves, which have a sort of uh, pit into which the fecal sludge goes, but it doesn't really store it. So it means it seeps out into the land. So thinking about last week, the word we learned from Wanza, the problem with these is Munyagala is pouring out as the expression we were taught last week. And that means the liquid drains away, which often means actually these pits have to be emptied much less often. In terms of distribution, so getting rid of the fecal sludge, for the first kind, the properly, the, the, the toilet with a septic tank, the official way of doing it is to get uh, vacuum trucks to empty the pits and take them to the solid waste site in Freetown, which is the official place to dispose of that sludge. However, in the other common kind of pit latrine, what we often see is manual pit emptiers who empty the pit and have to rebury the sludge on site. So often in the compound, they'll dig a pit and rebury that sludge there. We also have a number of ways of distributing uh, fecal sludge where it hasn't been stored. So going straight from the sludge to storage. So, uh, sorry, another way of emptying the, that kind of pit, rather than manual pit emptiers, would be connecting to pipes. And often what households do is empty these pipes directly into streams or drainage channels, often particularly during the rainy season, so that that sludge can be washed away. The other common uh, approach we have for getting rid of sludge with no storage is the use of what are called blackberries. So they're small buckets in which people uh, store their, uh, their feces and urine and take it out either to put it into a pit latrine or to take it directly and dump it outside, often in streams and drainage channels. And the other practices include what are called hanging toilets, so latrines that don't have a pit but empty directly into the stream, or, um, and that, that's another picture of a pit di um, emptying directly into the stream, or what's called flying toilets. In Freetown, they're called DHL after the delivery company, where people put shit in a plastic bag and throw it away. So these are some of the range of the most common ones. Obviously the first type, a sealed pit with a vacuum truck is the official and good practice. The second type, where there's some storage and some level to empty, is tolerated, but it's frowned upon. And finally, direct uh, distribution, often into waterways, is supposed to be the improper form of dealing with waste. So thinking about some of these common types of distribution of waste, one of the most common is this use of what are called blackberries, so buckets. And this is typically done by women in particular with their own waste, but also the waste of their household members. So for example, particularly children, they'll often use blackberry. So why do women do this? In our interviews, they told us there are a number of reasons. So firstly, a lot of women, particularly pregnant women, are worried about infections due to the uncleanliness of public or shared pit latrines. Secondly, um, there's often the fear of harassment and rape, especially if people have to use a toilet outside their house at night time. Thirdly, they told us um, that often the, the shared or compound toilet isn't working or is blocked and has filled up. So again, Munyagala is pouring out and they can't use those ones. Next, often where people are using public or shared toilets, there are very long queues especially at peak hour. So if people are needing to go to work or busy, they don't have time to use those and they're not able. Um, it's also often more affordable because some public toilet people have to pay fees. So for example, market women told us they save up their shit in a Blackberry because otherwise they have to go every time and pay. So what happens if people are using Blackberries and particularly if they're emptying Blackberries in streams or public spaces? 
So first of all, using a BlackBerry is a source of shame. People aren't supposed to do it, so they often do it secretly or at night. So there are taboos around it. Secondly, there are community bylaws. So in some communities, we were told, if people dispose of waste in drainage, they have to pay a fine of 5,000 to 10,000 leones, or they're forced to clean the drainage, or there's mob justice. So they are, they're given quite uh, bad social sanctions for doing this. In the second case, one of the other common forms of distribution is male manual pit emptiers reburying the fecal sludge on site. So why do they do this? Why are men doing this? So the first reason is physical access. So actually the suction trucks, the vacuum trucks, which are supposed to empty pits, often can't physically get into informal settlements. They're built on very steep hills or there's flooding and the roads are much too narrow. So it simply wouldn't be possible for trucks to go there. Secondly, um, we were told by Manuel Pitt Empties that Freetown C City Council asked us to deposit the sludge in barrels and bring it to landfill. A barrel costs 100,000 leones and then emptying it at the dump site is 500,000 leones. So to empty a pit, I'd have to pay more than 600,000 leones, a Manuel Pitt Emptier told us. And that's more than they make. It's, it's not possible as a business model. So they simply can't operate as businesses according to the official rules. But what happens, uh, what are the sanctions to manual pit emptiers if they're reburying on site? So according to uh, official laws, as we saw above, there's a fine of 250,000 leones for not emptying the full toilet, or sorry, this is for households, they can be charged for not emptying the toilet, or they could go to court. So they have to hire these manual pit emptiers. But what happens to the manual pit emptiers? So mun municipal sanitation bylaws threaten to penalize reburial on site with a fine of up to 500,000 leones or six months in prison. Uh, and that increases the precarity of informal sanitation work and undermines the status of worker and means often they have to do their work in secret. So thinking about that, is it fair to sanction sanitation workers and users if the existing system makes it impossible for them to comply safely or affordably. So thinking about the poll, we're thinking people who do this should be punished, but can they be punished if they have no alternative and the system doesn't allow them to dispose of their fecal waste in a way that's safe or is workable according to the businesses or what the houses can afford. So maybe I agree with those of you who said they should be sanctioned if um, there are the systems in place to allow them to dispose safely, but if there aren't, I wonder if that's fair. Um, so thinking about that, it's also important to think that actually these people are investing in their sanitation work and infrastructure, and they're trying to be clean and safe. So one woman from a household that built a poor flush toilet that empties into drainage channel to stop using a shared or hanging toilet told us this. Next, uh, she said, now we can access the toilet at any time during the day or night because we don't have many users. Also, the fear of contracting infection is no longer in me. The money we spent really affected some of our financial activities. We had to manage our spending on food, clothing and other activities to concentrate on construction. But despite this, we are happy that we're able to achieve this goal. So thinking about this, sanitation users and workers are investing in trying to dispose of fecal sludge as safely and cleanly as possible. And given that, given that they don't have other options of how to do it, I would argue it's not really fair to sanction them. And what we should focus on is giving them the opportunity to dispose of fecal sludge in a way that's safe um, and environmentally clean.